Hey everybody, this is Meyer, and in this video is what I'm gonna do is talk about microphones. What are the different types of microphones? What are recommended for studio use? And what to look for when you're buying a microphone? And I say microphones are optional because Unless you're actually planning on recording yourself at home, you probably won't need a microphone if all you're doing is either sequencing audio or going into a studio to record, which a lot of people do. But nowadays, more and more people are recording from home and they want to have their own home studio, so that's when people decide to get a microphone. There are two main types of microphones out there, and these include dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. So let's talk about the differences between these two and a quick and dirty overview of how they work. Dynamic microphones are mainly used for live performance, and they're super rugged. Most dynamic microphones can be found for under $200, including perhaps the most famous microphone of all, which is the Shure SM58. I'm currently recording this video through a Shure SM58. Of course, some dynamic microphones are also used in the studio. And if they are used in the studio, in addition to just sometimes vocals, they're also used for things like snares and kicks, and sometimes toms, which are loud percussive instruments where you want the build quality of a dynamic microphone there. The drawback of dynamic microphones is they aren't as sensitive, so as a result, they don't capture detail as well. And in particular, I think this is detail in the high frequency area. The way that dynamic microphones work is kind of like a speaker in reverse. So the way a speaker works is a voltage or a potential difference is applied across the voice coil of a speaker. This potential difference is translated into current, which induces a magnetic field, which pushes the magnet inside the coil in and out. This magnet is attached to the speaker cone, which as the speaker cone moves in and out is creating air displacement or pushing the air molecules around, which generates what we perceive as sound. So the way a dynamic microphone works is as a singer or an instrument creates air pressure changes, these air pressure changes are picked up by the diaphragm, which is attached to the magnet. And as this magnet moves in and out of this metal coil, it induces a magnetic field, induces a current, which is then translated into voltage, which is picked up by the cable and translated into an audio file by your computer. Now let's talk about the other type of microphone, which is a condenser microphone. Condenser microphones are mainly used for the studio and tend to be a little bit more expensive on average, with most condenser microphones starting at $150 and can go well over $3,000. In fact, perhaps the most famous condenser microphone is the Newman U87, which is usually retails for anywhere from $3,000 to $3,200. Condenser microphones usually require 48 volt phantom power, which is provided by an audio interface. So if you're going to use a condenser microphone, you pretty much need an audio interface. And I'll talk about how that 48 volt phantom power is used in a condenser microphone in just a moment. Large diaphragm condenser microphones like the AT4040 are good all around microphones for the studio and they're great for recording vocals and guitar. And the Audio-Technica 4040 is the main mic that I use to record things in my home studio, although I also sometimes use a U87, but because it's so expensive and stuff, I usually just prefer to use an AT4040. I'm not doing serious, serious recording in my home studio. It's mainly used for sequencing and recording videos like this. On the other hand, small diaphragm condenser microphones are great at capturing high frequency detail, and this includes higher pitched instruments like flutes and violins. So that's what these smaller diaphragm condenser microphones are used for. And most of the time, I would recommend somebody getting or starting with a large diaphragm condenser microphone and getting a small diaphragm one once they know exactly what they're trying to record. Now let's talk about how a condenser microphone actually works. If you look here on this picture on the right, the 48 volt phantom power is represented by the battery. And what this 48 volt does is it actually pushes charge onto the plates of this capacitor. The back plate of the capacitor is fixed, whereas the front plate is free to move back and forth. So as sound waves or air pressure comes into the microphone, they push up against the front plate or the microphone's diaphragm and move it closer and further away from the back plate. If you remember from physics, the capacitance is inversely related to the distance between the two plates. So as we increase and decrease the distance between the front and the back plate due to the sound pressure coming into the microphone, this creates an electric field or change in voltage, which is then measured as the audio signal that is then converted into an audio file by your audio interface. So that's kind of how a condenser microphone works. Those are the main types of microphones you'll see in pretty much 90% of the studios around the world, but there are other types of microphones out there. Perhaps one of the least common types of microphones you'll see nowadays are what are called ribbon microphones. And these are pretty much the most fragile and delicate of all, and they work a little bit different than their dynamic and condenser counterparts. 
Ribbon microphones tend to have a darker sound than most condenser microphones, and that's kind of just basically due to their construction. But once again, that's a generalization, and I don't want to be too strict about that. And the way ribbon microphones work is they actually measure the velocity of air molecules as they hit the, this ribbon inside of the microphone instead of the displacement of air itself. So inside of a ribbon microphone, you kind of have this metal ribbon, or sometimes it's aluminum or something like that, and a magnet. As air molecules enter into the ribbon microphone's diaphragm, they hit this ribbon, and the individual air molecules actually can be picked up as an induced current by this transformer over here, which is then output as a voltage change. So that's kind of how a ribbon microphone works. I don't want to get too technical about it, but just a general overview. The last type of microphones, which are usually a variant of dynamic or condenser microphones, I don't think I've ever seen a USB ribbon microphones, but usually seen as a uh, variant of dynamic or condenser microphones are USB microphones. And these are the cheapest options, so they're usually under $100. However, due to the quality, they're not recommended for studio work. In particular, while there are probably good USB microphones out there, there's kind of this idea that you get what you pay for. And due to the process of manufacturing microphones and the quality of the materials built in, most of the times USB microphones are fine for people doing podcasting or spoken word types of things. But for studio quality purposes, they're not recommended. Although to be fair, I have heard great things about the Rode NT1, which is kind of like a condenser USB microphone. So what the Rode NT1 basically is, is it's a USB microphone that combines both a condenser mic and an audio interface into one nifty little device that you just plug into your computer's USB port. Anyway, I hope this video is helpful and you get a little bit of understanding about the different types of microphones, and how they work. Once again, I think a good starting point is a large diaphragm condenser microphone like the Audio-Technica AT2020 or the AT4040 or the Rode NT1, not necessarily the USB version, but of course, head on to the Discord and you can have a discussion about the different types of microphones out there and what's recommended nowadays. Once again, don't forget to subscribe and check out the Discord for more awesome discussions, and I'll see you in the next video.